good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you again for joining. Today's uh, workshop, I'll try to teach you guys uh, a little bit about animation. Today, I'll be talking about about animation. Now, the thing with animation is that um, Blender has been used because it's open source uh, to create actual uh, m movies, etc. Uh, but more than that, you know, uh, for a small project as such, you can actually actually create very good looking, let's say commercials using animation and lighting, etc. So today I'll just walk you through a little bit of the animation capability of uh, Blender. It's really fun and like this is where you know you can really uh, sort of be creative and you know work out with the different aspects of Blender. Okay, so I'm assuming that you guys would know a little bit about the interface. So if that's fine, I'll just start off. So as usual, we're working with Blender 2.79. Uh, uh, you can work, I mean, so the latest version is 2.8 and above if i'm not wrong my system currently supports only 2.79 that's why i'm teaching it to you but i think uh, if you basically know the gist of it or uh, the way the, i mean the way things work you can probably apply uh, i mean apply it on on the newer version as well it shouldn't be a problem as such okay so the moment you open obviously you get this screen you click anywhere right left click and you get your basic interface which is again the cube now Immediately, uh, if you notice at the bottom of your screen, you will see this light gray space, right? With like these numbers, minus 50, minus 40, etc., and then zero, and then all the way till 250. You will see that this, you know, on the left-hand side, you have this uh, dark gray area on the left and on the right. And in between, you have this light gray area. Now, this light gray area, essentially, for animation, this is what we will be using. Now, again, if you want to change anything, uh, you know, you can come to this line over here and your cursor will change. And while holding your left mouse button, you can, for example, drag it up or drag it down. Okay, that's one way that you can change it. The other thing is, by holding your middle mouse button on this light gray area, it will change like this. And then you can basically position it uh, somewhere like this, right? Then, by bringing your mouse to this light gray area and using your scroll wheel, you can either extend it or make it smaller, okay? Uh, the numbers won't change. So, if you notice, you know, this is 0 and this is 250. So, e so, even when I'm making it bigger or smaller, the divisions will change, but the ends won't change, right? 0 and 250. And now the question comes that what is 0 and what is 250, etc., right? Uh, to answer that, this is essentially the number of frames. What do I mean by a frame? A frame is a single picture, okay? So in the previous workshop, I had essentially taught you how to render one picture, right? That one picture was one frame. So I'll just pause here and explain a little bit about how a video works. I think most of you understand it anyways, but I'll uh, explain it nonetheless. So a video is nothing but a lot of pictures playing very fast, okay? And uh, the rate at which the pictures are playing, we call it frames per second, okay? So to give you an example, on the right-hand side of your screen, you will notice that there is something called 24 FPS, right? 24 FPS essentially means 24 frames per second. What that means is that if a video has 24 frames per second, that means every one second of that video has 24 pictures in it, right? But because those pictures are moving so fast, so you're seeing 24 pictures go in front of you in one second, it looks like it's a video, right? I mean, that's pretty much basic. Everyone understands that. So the way Blender works is also like that, that when you're rendering a video, it actually, so if you're rendering, let's say, a five-second video, oh, okay, let's say you're going to render a 10-second video and your FPS or frame rate is 24 frames per second. So one second has 24 frames and if you're going to render 10 seconds that's going to be 24 multiplied with 10 240 frames so overall what blender does for you is it actually individually renders out those 240 frames and then it combines them with the frame rate of 24 fps and finally it will give you a 10 second clip now of course 24 is like the standard or the bare minimum uh, you can do 30 frames per second, for example, or if you want a really smooth uh, video, you can also do something like, let's say, 60 frames per second. 
So if you click on this 24 frames, you get all these options. So you can do 30, 50, 60. That depends on you. But 24, if I'm not wrong, is like the uh, is is the bare minimum recommended sort of uh, frame rate, right? Okay. Now, now that I've explained to you what a what an FPS is, this 0, 10, 20, 30 are nothing but frames. So this entire gray area is what you're going to be working with. When you open Blender, by default, Blender assumes that you're going to be creating a video that has 250 frames in it. This is like a default when it opens. So that's why it stops at 250. Uh, 240 would be something like 10 seconds plus another 10 frames. So it's about 10 seconds. So Blender assumes that you're going to start off with 10 seconds. So the first thing that you do is you figure out how long you want your video to be. Of course, you can always change that uh, later. Now, let's assume uh, hypothetically that I will be animating a five second clip. Okay. If I'm going to be animating a five second clip with a frame rate of 24 frames per second, that's going to be 5 into 24, which is 120, right? So how do I set that? If you come to the bottom, you will notice that there is a start and there is an end, right? That's fine. So starting, it starts at the first frame and it ends at the 250th frame. At this end over here, if you click on it and if I type in 120, this automatically gets reduced to 120. That means this is my workspace now. This is the length of the video that I will be working with. Right, so it starts at zero, ends at 120. Of course, using my scroll wheel, I can increase it. So what happens when I increase my scroll, I mean, when I increase the length of that using my scroll wheel is, right now, if you notice, the divisions are zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, etc. If I increase, I mean, if I scroll through my scroll wheel, the divisions go from 10 to, let's say, 5. So now it's 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, okay? So... I spoke to you about this light gray area, about frames per second, and about, you know, uh, the total length of your video. So right now it's 120 frames per second. Okay. The second thing is, right next to start and end, you will notice that there is another small, co I mean, small box over here that has one written on it. What this means is the frame that you are on right now. You can individually move it to go to each individual frame and you can edit that frame or if you quickly want to jump through you can also type in so something like 45 and it will skip to the 45th frame this we will be using a lot because when i want to for example put in different features in different frames i can directly jump to them by typing out that frame over here all right so i've spoken about this i've spoken about the fps and uh, that part okay now i'll begin talking about the actual uh, you know at, uh, the basics of animation. <clears throat> Before I begin that, as usual, there's a lamp over here. I don't need it right now, so I'll click on it. We are right now in object mode. I'll click on it, and then I'll press an X, and then delete, so that lamp is gone. Okay. If you press the N uh, button on your keypad, you get this extra column here, right? So uh, if you press N, it comes. If you press again, N again, it goes away. So uh, I'm just so okay. I've also activated my uh, screencast. So every time I press a you know a, a key, it will come on the left hand side. So if in case you're not, I mean you could not hear what I said or something, this left side will tell you what I'm pressing on my keyboard. So right now it shows that I pressed the letter N. Okay. So if you also press the letter N, you get this right this column over here. Fine. Just keep that on for the time being. Now when I click click on the cube, immediately I get these extra things right. So to show that, I mean, to show it to you again, if I deselect my cube, you know, if I select my cube, I get these things over here, location, rotation, and scale. These are exactly what they mean. Location, for example, if I move along the x-axis, you will notice that only the x location is changing, y location, z location has not changed, the rotation has not changed, and the scaling has not changed, okay? So I just press Control plus Z, okay? Similarly, if I rotate it, let's say, along the x-axis, something like this, only the rotation value has changed, uh, but the location, rotation, and scaling, I mean, the y and z rotation and scaling has not changed, okay? Similarly, if I scale it, which is scaling it, uh, you know, uh, whether bigger or smaller, because I'm scaling the entire object, both x, y, and z are getting scaled equally. You might notice, so right now it's 2.46, 2.46, 2.46. 
but rotation and location obviously have not changed okay the reason why i spoke so much about location rotation and scaling is because it's going to play an important role when i begin to talk about uh, the animation aspect of it okay let me just start off by showing you how to start your like you know the most basic animation so as usual click on the cube and click on your keyboard the letter i okay so when you click on the keyboard the letter i you get this menu over here now it says insert a keyframe and then it gives you lots of options so location rotation scaling uh, lock rot means location and rotation lock rot scale means location rotation and scaling okay so what this does is and i'll show it uh, with an example so that you guys understand better but what this does is right now we are at frame 1 okay uh, this bottom box shows which frame we are on so right now we are at frame 1 at frame 1 if i press i then i can select i either to highlight the location rotation scaling or all three of them or two of them what that means is for example if i uh, click on location rotation and scale for example immediately you will notice that these sides have become like yellow they were previously gray now they have become yellow which means that it now recognizes that at frame one at frame one the location is zero 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 the rotation is 0, 0, 0, and the scaling is also 1, 1, 1. That means at frame 1, we have defined its properties. All right. Now, let's assume I go to frame uh, 50. Okay. So when I go to frame 50, nothing changes from the cube. Uh, I basically have moved to frame 50, but the cube is still where it is. Now, now that I have moved to frame 50, let me, you know, uh, for example, move my cube somewhere up here. Let me scale it, you know, something like this let me also rotate it along the x-axis okay so i have done three things first i moved it up then i scaled it and then i rotated it that's shown over here my location has changed in the z in the z uh, direction i have rotated it along the x-axis and i have scaled it uh, equally so it's 3.417 3.417 3.4 like 417 now at this configuration if i press i again and if i choose lock rot scale it locks my ro location rotation and scale again that means at first frame i had certain values and at the 50th frame right right here at the 50th frame i have these values for location rotation and scale what blender is going to do now is very simple you define the values or the state of location rotation and scale at the first frame and you define the values of location, rotation, and scale at the 50th frame. In between, there is nothing. So by default, what Blender is going to do is when you click on the play button, as it is moving from frame Z, from frame 1 to frame 50, it will go from state 1 to state 2 gradually as an animation. So if I click on this play button, right? I can stop this here, yeah. Let me play that again. So you will notice that three things are happening over here. First, as it is going from uh, you know this height to that height, while it is going up, it is slowly tilting. Okay, and the other thing is it is also increasing in size. So it's not like you know it goes up and then it uh, rotates and then it scales. No, rotation, scaling, and it moving along the z-axis are all happening simultaneously okay so you can again you can check at it like this right so the reason why it is changing uh, you know both location rotation and scaling is because when we had selected i when we had selected i we said uh, to blender basically that at the first frame i want you to note down the values of location rotation and scale so it noted down all the three values and then at the 50th frame also i use the same feature so it noted down all the three values again and therefore you can see it changing all the three values as it is going from frame 1 to frame 50. however uh, if i wanted to change only one uh, parameter so i'll show that through an example 
But before that, for example, uh, if I want to delete, let's say my frames, are, I mean, my characteristics at a certain frame. So I can click here at the bottom. I can go to the 50th frame, right? At the 50th frame, it was in this configuration. And I can simply go to the, like, let's say the location and I can clear keyframes. So that's gone now, right? And then similarly, I can clear keyframes. So right click, you have this drop down menu and then clear keyframes, okay? So that's gone. Now, uh, our first, this thing is gone as well. So I'm gonna go to my first frame. Okay, so it's set in this place only. Let's say, for example, okay, I'm gonna delete this cube. Shift plus A, get a new cube, okay. In the previous example, we what we had done is, we had uh, asked Blender essentially to note down the values of location, rotation, as well as scaling for frame one, as well as frame 50. That's why when we were clicking the play button, you could see that the properties of both the location and what I mean by location is it was moving along the Z axis. The properties of rotation, what do I mean by rotation is that I had asked it to rotate along the X axis and scaling, I basically made it bigger. So Blender did all three. That is because I asked Blender to note down the values of location, rotation and scale for both frame one and frame two. Now, if uh, I had not done that, Okay, and if I just ask it to note down any one value, for example, I have the same cube here. I'm going to press I at frame one. You will notice that I'm at frame one to begin with. I'll press I. And then once I click on I, instead of uh, location, rotation, and scale, if I just click on location, only the X, Y, and Z values are noted. Now, let's assume that I go to the 50th uh, frame, okay? Once I have gone to the 50th frame, let's, uh, you know, I'll take my cube, I'll move it to a certain height. I will also increase the size scaling. And then I will also, let's say, rotate it. Okay. Now at the 50th frame, I have changed. I mean, I have moved from this point to a higher point along the Z axis. I have also scaled it up. So I have made it much bigger and I have also rotated it. However, if I click on I, and if I, again, only select location, and if I, you know, uh, so this button over here uh, goes to the first frame, okay? This button over here goes to the first frame. So I'm back over here. If I click on play, it only moves in the X direction. So you will notice that it's not changing. I mean, it's not rotating or it's not scaling. It's only moving in one direction. And, and the reason for that is because we have only noted down the location uh, values of it. Yeah, let me try to give you guys another example. I'm just pressing Control Z here uh, to undo all these things. Okay, so let me put the cube again. Okay, again I'm at frame one. Let me press I and let me let's say lock the values of location, rotation, and scale. Okay, so the I mean whether it's rotated or whether it's scaled up or what is the location at frame one, everything has been noted down. Let me then go to let's say frame fifty. And then at frame 50, let me go to a certain height, increase the size of the cube, and also, let's say, rotate it, OK? However, at the frame 50, I will only ask it to remember the location. So insert keyframe only of location, OK? Now, if I go back to my first frame, and if I click on play, you will notice that the same cube with the same height, uh, I'm sorry, like the same cube, with the same size is just going up. Whereas in fact, I just showed you that after I went up, I had scaled it up and then I had rotated it as, as well, etc. The reason it did not remember that is because, see, at frame one, I asked it to remember the location, rotation and scale. That's why this particular configuration, right? The way that the cube is sitting over here, uh, the way that it is, you know, it has uh, no rotation, the scaling one, everything is recorded. However, at that height, at that height over here, above that height, the keyframe that I had inserted was only of location. So my scaling as well as my rotation does not take place. That's why when I click on play, only, you know, the cube basically just goes up. All right. So I'm just going to press Control Z again. Get this back. Okay. Now that I'm done with that, I'll uh, talk about another thing, which is uh, essentially speed. Okay, so 
Let me just put it on the top view, something of this sort. Okay. So let's assume that I have my cube over here. And as usual, I'm at frame one. So I'm going to click on I, and then I'm going to lock all three. So location, rotation, and scale. Okay. That's locked for me. Now I'm going to go to, let's say, the 50th frame, right? The 50th frame is there. Always start off by entering the value of your frame and then moving your cube and then, you know, inserting the keyframe. So I've put in the 50th uh, frame. Right now it's in the 50th frame. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my cube only along the y axis. Okay. Let's assume I've moved it somewhere uh, here. Okay. Somewhere here, for example. Somewhere here is fine. Okay. Then I'm going to press on I again and then location, rotation, and scale. Now, when I go back to my first frame, and if I click play, my cube goes from that point to this point. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now, it has a certain speed, and you might have noticed that I did not put any input for speed. Okay, I just put in the locations and the frames. The reason for that is, think about it. Uh, speed. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure you all. I mean, like all of you know the formula of speed, right? Speed is essentially distance by time. So by choosing this point and this point, I have provided the distance. And the time essentially is your frame. So in this case, it is 50 frames. So I have given the distance as well as the time. So the speed by default is automatically calculated and we don't need to enter speed. Now, let's assume for the same frame, okay? For the same frame, instead of keeping it over here, if I had, for example, kept it uh, somewhere a little bit further, and done this. Right? So now what I have done is initially the distance was still here. Now I have increased the distance. So speed is equal to distance by time. My time is same, which is 50 frames. But what I have done is instead of uh, instead of asking the cube to only come till here, I have asked it now to come all the way here. Okay. Because the distance has increased and the time is same, obviously the cube is going to be much faster because within the same time it has to cover the same distance, right? So if I click on play you will notice that it's much faster than it was in the previous frame. So the same thing, you can increase your speed by either keeping it at a lower uh, frame, or you can just increase the distance and your you know speed will get calculated automatically. Right. That was the first thing. Now, in this current example, in this, cu in this current example, this is my frame one, and uh, my frame 50 will have my cube at that location. Okay, right here. This is uh, going to be where my cube will finally stop. Another thing that you can do is instead of playing it, you can actually go frame by frame. So right now it's at one. You will notice that there are these two buttons over here. So uh, I mean, those I mean those are just for like playing and stuff. But on the left hand side of it, you will notice where we had the you know the number of the current frame, which is one. You will notice that there are these two small arrows. If you click on them then you can individually go from frame to frame, right? So you can see that as I'm going like 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, you know, etc. Each frame, I can see the cube uh, moving. So if I want, I can individually edit each of these frames as well, but I'm just showing that to you, okay? So you go all the way here and then 50th frame, done. So coming back to our first frame. Another thing which you might notice is when I chose the first spot and the second spot, and if I click on play, the cube obviously is moving in just a single line. Okay, and that's the default. When you choose two points, Blender will automatically take that object from this point to that point in a single straight line. But let's assume that's not how you wanted to do. You know, you wanted uh, the cube to go from the same point, which is point A, to the point B, which is here. But instead of going in a straight line, let's assume you wanted the cube to maybe go in a zigzag way. Okay, like this. But by default, when you enter the location here and the location here, the you know Blender is basically going to ask the cube to you know move in a straight line. There are like there are lots of ways in which you can do that. The first thing is you could have individually you know asked uh, Blender to go in these directions, which is first frame here. The second frame instead of choosing, I mean the fiftieth frame instead of choosing over here, you could have chosen you know uh, let's say the fiftieth frame over here and then the 70th frame over here. So it will go from here to here in the 50th frame and then from here to here in the 70th frame, etc. Now, I'll just give you an example of the current one. So right now, I have my cube over here, 
first frame, point A. This is the 50th frame and it's in point B. Now what I'm going to do is in between, I'm going to add a few stops. So I'll explain what that means. Uh, I'll go to the, let's say 10th frame. Okay. When I go to the 10th frame, the cube moves over here. Now what I'm going to do in, in this case is I'm going to move the cube uh, in some other location, let's say somewhere here for the 10th frame. Okay. I keep it here and then I'll press I and then again, location, rotation and scale. Okay. So if I go back to my first frame, you will now notice that there are three key frames at frame one, the location of the cube is here at frame 10, the location of the cube is here. And at frame 50, the location of the cube is here. So when I click on play, the cube is going to have a motion, something like this. It's going to go from here to here in 10 frames. And then from there, it's going to come to your 50th position. So if I play, right. This is fairly simple because from Blender's point of view, you have just given uh, three keyframes. So Blender says that, okay, I just need to move from one keyframe to the other in a straight line. So that's all it's doing. From here, it moves here and then it moves here. Now, if I wanted my zigzag pattern, I, I added a keyframe of, you know, the cube coming over here at, at uh, 10th frame. Let's assume for the 20th frame, I add something here. So I can go to the 20th frame and the cube will be somewhere here. And then again, uh, I click on G. And let's assume I'll keep the cube somewhere here and then I'll click on I again and then block rotation scale. Again, let me go back to my first frame. Now you will notice that there are four frames, one, 10, 20 and 50. At one, we have told Blender that the location is here. I mean, the location, rotation and scaling, etc. is here. At 10th, we have asked it that it's somewhere here. At uh, 20, it is somewhere here. And finally, at 50, it is somewhere here. So. How do you think it's going to move? It's going to go some something like this. Once it comes over here, there's nothing else, you know, except the last uh, position here. So it's going to have a motion of like this. Okay. So let me just play and show it to you guys. Again. So it's very simple. What is it doing? This is the 10th frame at around 10th frame. It moved there, right? When I click again, it's moving till the 20th frame. Then finally, it's moving till the 50th frame. Because at 10th frame, we had given up a, a value. At the 20th frame, we had given a value. And finally, at the 50th frame. Similarly, what I'm going to do is, let's say, at my 30th frame, I'm going to add one more uh, you know, location. Let me keep it somewhere here. Click on I, lock rotation scale. And then finally, at uh, 40, let me go. Add, uh, you know, let me keep it somewhere here. I lock rotation scale. Okay. So we're going to have a purely zigzag pattern, right? So I'm going to click on play. Right. I'm going to click on play again. So again, very simple. In the beginning, we had only asked, I mean, we had only given Blender two values, which is the location of the cube at frame one and the location of the cube at frame 50. So Blender had a pretty simple task. It was like, okay, at frame one, I'm, I'm here and I'm frame 50, I'm supposed to be here. So throughout the frames in between, I'll just basically travel in a straight line. Now what I have done is that in between at frame 10, at frame uh, 20, at frame 30 and at frame 40, I had given I have given it different locations. Now, from frame one, the immediate next uh, information is at frame 10, which is basically that the cube needs to be here at frame 10. So between here and here, it will go in a straight line. And then from 10, the next available information is that the location of the cube is at here, is supposed to be here at frame 20. So therefore, automatically from here to here, it will again go in a straight line. And then likewise, you know, it will keep going. So I give you a very simple example of a zigzag pattern, you know, something like a sine or cos wave. But if you wanted to do much complex, uh, you know, for example, patterns or motions, etc., you would have to distribute them throughout the frames because at the end of the day, Blender is going to go in straight lines. So you have to distribute it in, in, in that sense. Another aspect, if you notice that when, when we only have to travel from here to here in a straight line, 
the speed of the cube was you know it was fine but now if i click on play you will notice that the speed of the cube is pretty fast and the reason it's fast is again uh, very simple our time is same right speed is equal to distance by time our time is still 50 frames right from point a to point b we need to reach in 50 frames so 50 frames has not changed however the distance has greatly changed before it was only you know in a straight line like this now we have to go in this zigzag uh, manner and obviously that's a much larger distance so in order to cover a larger amount of distance in the same time obviously the speed has greatly increased so you know immediately right now it's lagging so it might look like you know a little slow but yeah the speed is obviously much uh, faster again throughout the process if you wanted to see it frame by frame if you go down where you have your one written over here you can see that there are these two arrows so if you click on you know the right hand arrow you can individually see as the cube is moving right frame by frame this is frame by frame so you can do a frame by frame analysis as well so you get to see exactly how your uh, cube is moving okay so that was one example which i wanted to give i'm just going to press control plus z a lot of times and okay fine stop right over here okay nonetheless uh if i wanted to remove all of these keyframes as i said one way to do that would be you can go for example to each uh place where you had put the keyframe so if i go at 10 i had put all these key keyframes and i can uh clear them so right click and clear okay so all of these guys are gone now because you know we basically cleared the keyframes all right now uh the next thing that i wanted to sort of show is how to uh, uh mix up different aspects okay Uh, so here, I have my cube, and I'm just going to show a very simple uh, animation of rotating it about the z-axis. Okay, so same thing. We press I, and then let's assume you know lock rotation scale. So at frame one, that has been locked, and then at frame uh, let's say fifty, I'm at frame fifty right now, and then once I'm at frame fifty, I will press R and Z, and along the z-axis, I will rotate it a little bit. I'll keep it in this position. and then i'll press i and then again i'll set this so location rotation and scale now when i go back to my first frame and if i click play it just rotates right it's fairly simple so frame 1 we had this configuration and at frame 50 you know it was rotated to a different configuration so when i press play all that it does is basically rotate like right? fairly simple uh now that i have added just rotation what i can do is i can add things above this and you know uh, allow things to happen simultaneously so what i mean is currently i have just asked the cube to rotate now what i'm going to do is again i'll come to frame 1 over here and uh, you know i have my i block rotation scale uh what i'm going to do now is at frame 50 so i'm going to go to frame 50 at frame 50 i am going to let's say move the cube somewhere here so before i only told it to rotate now i'm only asking it to move okay so i'm going to keep that over here and then i i'll ask it to uh fix the frame as well now if i press play you will notice that two things are happening one the rotation that was previously happening is still happening okay and second the cube is moving so if i go frame by frame you i mean if i pause in between and see you will notice that it's moving along this direction but it's also rotating so let me play that again okay so this is another thing which you can do of course you could have done it in a single go right you could have done it in a single go where you could have fixed the frame over here and then at this point you could have basically bought the cube over here and rotated it as well and it would have done the same thing right but i explain this to you because you can do it individually as well if you're getting confused and if you want to see individual things at one one time you can start like you can do it in step wise so first you can only ask blender to rotate the cube and then you can see if the 
rotation speed is fine and everything is fine once you are happy with that then you can ask blender to okay while my cube is rotating i also want it to move from here to here and that will happen as well on a similar note for example let's assume again individually i want it to also uh, you know scale it so again frame 1 i have this i'm going to go to frame 50 and at frame 50 i will scale it a little bit over here press i and then lock rotation and i mean okay so let me go back to my first frame okay now if i click on play right three things are happening now rotation moving and scaling but i did not do them at the same time however in a, like towards in the beginning of this workshop i had given you an example where i had basically done all of them like you know together but i'm also showing you an alternative method where you could do them individually so you could individually first select only rotation and see how that works and then cause it to move and then cause it to you know uh, you know basically increase in size and then as you're doing it in the background it's uh, happening simultaneously so again if i click play now it moves rotates and scales right all right so just show it one last time okay all right so that was up until this point now from the point onwards from now i will be talking about uh, lighting and how you can like basically play around with lighting in blender and how for example you can have the effect of light uh, slowly turning on or immediately turning on or having a gradual increase of light etc so before i move on to that does uh, anyone have any doubt so far i'll just clear the frame still then do you guys have any doubts no okay cool cool fine uh let me just move my cube somewhere here okay so to explain the concept of uh, i'll just delete this cube and have a new one set up okay so to explain the concept of uh, lighting in animation etc i'm going to quickly uh, you know build a setup like how i had built in my previous workshop uh, for rendering it out and then i'll basically explain it through uh, that thing uh, also by the way a quick note despite i mean uh, even though i've showed you you know how to for example rotate it and scale it etc and all those things at the end of the day you uh, something that's very very important is that uh, whatever is within your camera view is all that is going to get uh, rendered so if you press zero on your number pad you come to your camera view here okay whatever is within your camera view that will basically get uh, animated so for example right now i'm in my camera view this is my cube i'm going to do a very simple animation so at frame 1 let me just you know fix location rotation and scale and then let me go to the 50th frame for example let me go to the 50th frame right and at 50th frame let me rotate it something like that and then add uh, a keyframe there and if i'm back to my first frame and if i click play this is rotating okay now if you press zero you come out of your camera view now you might have uh, basically you know done those animations etc and then you might be seeing it from this view which is what i'm showing right now and you might be seeing that okay you know the cube is rotating like this but when you are animating this particular view is not is not what you're going to get if you press zero you come to your camera view this view is what you're go is what you're going to get so like keep that in mind when you're animating the view that is there within the camera that gets animated so if i click on play again this is what i mean this is what i'm going to see in my animation right first point second point just like how you could do all those things to the cube you know rotating and moving it and etc you can also do that to your camera so very simple for example you have your camera here right uh, i'll show you a quick way of working out so that you understand i have showed you guys in the previous workshop that if you go to the top right of your screen uh, here your cursor will change into this cross right this plus sign 
uh, while holding that with your left key, you can drag it and you get two screens like this over here, right? Now, in these two screens, on the left-hand screen, if I press zero, I get this view, okay? And on the right-hand screen, I can still basically, you know, pretty much uh, click on my cube or click on my camera, etc. So what I'm going to do now is here, this gives me the view of what my animation would look like. Now I'm going to click on the camera. And with the camera also, you can pretty much do the same thing that you did, uh, you know, with the other objects, which is basically, I'm going to select my camera and then I'm going to move my camera along the y-axis. So you can see as I'm moving my camera, uh, the cube is, it looks like the cube is going front, but in reality, it's the camera, right, which is going back. So I have my camera here fixed over here. And at this point, I am at frame one. I'll click on I and then I will set the parameters for my camera. Okay, done. Then I will go to the 50th frame. I will go to the 50th frame. And while I'm in the 50th frame, I will move my camera something like this. Okay, somewhere here. And then I'll click on I and then lock rotation scale again. Now you will notice that two things will happen. One, we have asked our cube to uh, rotate along the z-axis. And second, we have also asked our camera that at frame one, you have to be here. And at frame two, you have to be here. So the cube is going to rotate. And also the camera is going to go from you know this point to this point. So if I click on play, right, this is how it's going to look like. In your actual rendered video, this left-hand screen of the screen is what you're going to see, right? A rotating cube. So it will look like the cube is coming towards you, right? Because this, I mean, after you're done animating, this, this part of the screen is pretty much, you know, it'll look like it's static. So in your actual animation, it will look like the cube while rotating is moving towards the left-hand side. But in reality, what you have done is you have kept the cube where it is, but the camera is moving from uh, left to right. Okay. So if I press on play again, the cube on the left hand side, you can see it's rotating and you know, it looks like it's coming towards the left hand side, but in reality it's not. So if you want to see how it's playing out, uh, you know, in the actual thing, uh, if you notice from here, yeah, if I just zoom in a little bit, yeah. So now you can see both the cube as well as the camera in their, I mean, uh, you know, in this view. If I click on play, you will notice that the cube is rotating and the camera is moving, right? I can go frame by frame as well. So the cube is rotating and as it's rotating, the camera is moving. So what would be highly recommended is that you have this sort of a setup when you're trying to animate because you can know how exactly your animation would look like and then you can also play around with uh, these things. Okay, uh, let's assume we wanted, uh, you know, let's assume we wanted uh, something like a, uh, okay, how do I explain this one second? I have this at the 50th frame. One second. Okay, now what I'm going to do quickly is, let's assume uh, I wanted to change the angle of the cube even further. So G and Z, if I press, uh, you know, it's gonna go for example, somewhere here. And then if I press R, and if I try to rotate it, I'm, I'm not trying to rotate it along any axis. It's, it's like, you know, in a weird place, whatever. And if I press on I, okay. Lock, if I again click on lock, rotation and scale. And if I go back to my previous thing, as usual, it's going to go like this and then it's going to go up and come to that view. So, right, it, it happened very fast because uh, the time is quite slow. I mean, the, the yeah, the time is quite, uh, you know, quick. Um, within 10 frames, I have asked the camera to go up and uh, rotate. So up until this point, it's gradual. Okay, it's gradually coming here and then it randomly shifts there. Okay. Now, if you notice uh, one thing, one second, yeah. If you notice one thing, when I asked the camera to move up, uh, you know, it came here and then it continued onwards and then, you know, it moved. Whereas in, um, in actual, you know, for example, like videos, you have these cutscenes, right? What I mean by that is you might have a video that will play, you know, for example, let's say, 
the first part okay let's imagine this is a that this is a commercial okay and uh, you know for example you know you might have a shot where the first part of the commercial is the side view i mean like this angle or this uh, you know shot where you have the cube like this uh the other part of the commercial let's say it has something like you know the camera going like this or the cube going in a different direction whatsoever if you try to keep the camera there or if you yeah, now for example if i try to keep the camera here at the top right and if i click on play i can't directly jump from here to here what what's going to happen is that if i keep the position of the camera there it's going to slowly again move from here to here and i can see that movement if i want to skip that movement what i can do is i can quickly so okay one second let me so just quickly you let me go to for example uh okay one second right now i'm on the 50th frame let me come back to the 50th frame okay so now oh, one second uh, Let me just quickly give you one second. Fifty first frame. Okay. Okay. Let me quickly see if I got this right. I'm just trying to. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Uh, this is a little confused in that aspect. Okay, yeah. What I essentially wanted to show you guys, which was basically, I was going to bring this up in the lighting part of it, but uh, I just wanted to show you guys. So what I what I meant to show is, for example, up until this point, I think it was pretty clear that you have your camera coming in like this, and you have your cube uh, rotating. Now, what I said is. For example, let's assume for the same camera at uh, let's assume the seventieth frame, right? Right now I'm at the seventieth frame. At the seventieth frame, if I had asked the camera to you know go somewhere up like this, and uh, if I, for example, chose the position something uh, like this, okay, and if I click on I, lock rotation and scale again, and if I go back, right? So what's going to happen is you're going to see a gradual movement, okay? that this is what i mean so up until the 50th frame you have like this and then from the 50th frame till the 70th frame you can still see the camera go up this is what i meant to say right you can see the gradual movement of the camera go up what i wanted to show was suppose you don't want that right and suppose you directly want that after this you don't want to show the camera going up you directly want the camera to be like you know uh, it immediately you want it to be here at the top if you want to do that what you can do is at the 50th frame at the 50th frame this is the position of the camera you go one frame above so you go something like 51st frame and then at the 51st frame you can for example keep your camera somewhere here and like let's say rotate it something like that etc and then click on i again and then lock rot scale so now because the camera is at the 51th i mean the because the new position as is at you know the 51st frame it's not going to have a gradual up uh, like you know an upswing it's going to come till here gradually and then immediately it's going to shift there right this is helpful for example if you're doing cut scenes or something right this is what i wanted to show in the previous example after 50 you could see as the camera is slowly moving
moving up and rotating, etc. Whereas in this version, it goes up until here, and then immediately it shifts there. Okay. And that was uh, one thing that I wanted to show. Uh, then, yeah. Now I'll just quickly move on to the lighting part of it. I'll quickly clear. I'll quickly clear the keyframes. Okay, uh, fine. As I had explained in my previous workshop, I'll just quick, like quickly try to set up a render scene, and then from there onwards, I'll I'll try to talk to you about the lighting part, and we should be wrapping up after that. So. So I'm creating a base, okay, and then I'm going to have my I'm selecting my cube move it somewhere here okay uh just gonna add a little bit of rotation okay fine let the cube be like that all good i'm going to add for lighting purposes i'm going to add just one light over here i think it should be fine okay now i'll quickly go to the i'll quickly try to render this Cycles render. Uh, you go to viewport shading, rendered mode. This is how it initially looks like. I can again split my screen. So over here I can start working. So me first click on the top part and give it some emission or lighting. So emission, let me keep that as you can see. The background uh, color, let me change that to complete black. Base, let's keep it man. So come back here, add new. So let's take a lighter color. Basically, copy it and then going to add another lighting source here. I know we'll just do that work with this one. So we have actually uh, we just need this sort of like better way extreme concept. Okay. okay. So we have a basic cube over here. So a gradual lighting means, for example, if I'm having a five second clip, throughout the five second clip, the lighting is going to slowly increase. So at the first uh you know frame it's going to be zero as it's going to be switched off and then at the 50th frame let's say it's going to be lit so in between from frame one to frame 50 it's going to slowly you know it's, it's going to keep on increasing so that's a gradual lighting 
the second type of lighting is for example if you want like you know how uh, for example if you enter your room and if you uh, switch on the bulb it does not gradually increase in its intensity you know it goes from immediately being dark to suddenly being you know lit so that's what we're going to do here the first thing is uh, the material right for uh, the 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 uh, lighting source we don't keep it as emission uh, in animation what, what we try to do is instead of emission there is something called uh, mix shader okay what mix shader allows you to do is uh, it allows you to combine two materials so what i'm going to do is i'll choose one as emission and the other shader as you know something uh, simple like glossy bsdf okay and then in emission let me keep the intensity five okay? now you will see that there is this word over here called fac now fac right is right now at uh, 0.5 what that means is it's trying to mix the properties like 50% of light of emission properties and 50% of uh, let's say uh, you know diffuse bsdf now if you go to any one of the extremes only one property will be seen so for example right now it's at 0.5 if i go at 0 the property of this uh, tile over here will be only light okay that's why it's right now and if i go at 1 the property of that will be diffuse bsdf which is basically a uh, normal material so the light is switched off okay so at 1 you can imagine that the light is switched off and then at 0 you can say that it is switched on so in order to have a gradual lighting it's very simple at right now i'm at frame 1 i'm at frame 1 right now i will keep my fac to 1 once i have kept my fac to fac to 1 on this where it shows 1 if i click i it will say this will notice that it has become uh, yellow what that essentially says is just like my rotation scaling and uh, location over here i can similarly tell blender that okay at frame 1 remember that the property of this tile is dark okay then let me go to let's say frame 50 okay uh, so i'm at frame 50 and then at frame 50 i can change it to zero let's say okay for some reason this has gone inside i don't know what happened to the cube but okay we'll figure it out so at frame at frame 50 if i bring my fac to zero that means at frame 50 the tile is going to have the property of flight so once i have kept it to zero i can again go over here and click on i and the, you will notice that it has become yellow what this essentially means is that at frame 1 let me just go ahead and show at frame at frame one, it is uh, dark okay and then at frame 50 it is light so when i click play throughout the video it's not going to you know like suddenly switch on it's going to have a gradual like as though the light is slowly turning on so the intensity of the light will keep on varying such that at frame 50 it is completely on okay so before i show that let me just just down slightly down because yeah okay now if you notice if i click on play uh on the left hand side it's rendering so it might not immediately show so right now i'm at frame 4 okay uh you will notice that as i'm increasing my uh, frames the light is slowly turning on right i'm at frame 13 right now it is slightly turned on right as i'm increasing you know for example right now it's at frame 18 then frame 30 then frame 40 then finally frame 50 is fully lit also you might have noticed that the cube is rotating the reason the cube is rotating is that our previous frames the example frames where i had shown the rotation of the cube is still on so even though we are playing with the lighting so the light is going from completely dark to you know uh, completely bright and at the same time the cube is also rotating because i had i have not deleted those frames yet so uh, you know let me just try to show that again so as i'm progressing the cube is both rotating as well as the lighting is getting fully fleshed now of course i can change uh, you know my lighting i can make it more strong so right now it's at uh, uh, sorry right now it's at 5 the strength of the light let's assume i had kept it at 8 so i get at 8 boost getting more but okay 
this angle should be fine for you guys to understand. Let me try to keep it a little bit more, let's say 12. So that'll be more right now. Uh, this is at frame 50, okay? If I go again to frame zero, and if I keep moving, you will notice that two things are happening. One, the light is going from being uh, very dark to slightly increasing in intensity, okay? And the cube also rotating, so you have this. And then finally, at frame 50, the cube stops rotating and lighting is also pretty much done. OK, cool. Uh, let's assume I didn't want that. OK, uh, let's assume I wanted it to be something like you know, how you have it in your room, that you just come and it's all dark. And then suddenly, I have the you know light going from being completely dark to being completely light. Like I don't want this gradual increase of light. So the way we do that is, uh, let me just clear the frames. Yeah. So if you notice that completely dark now because our frames are not the light frames are gone. Okay, fine. Let's assume that you want it to be something like you know, like a light switch where you up until frame 30, let's imagine that up until frame 30, you want it to be switched off, like completely dark. But then at frame 30, you want it to act like a switch where essentially you turn the light on and then suddenly I have complete brightness. So I don't want this gradual increase of brightness. I want this complete brightness. So it's very simple, right? I go back, I mean, I select this again. So right now it's at one. So one, as I said, which I mean, it means that it's switched off. So I can go, let's say, to my 30th frame. My 30th frame right now. And what happens is once I've chosen my 30th frame, you will notice that it's still dark. So at the 30th frame, I will again go to my one over here. And again, like it. what I've done is I basically told Blender that frame one is dark and frame 30 is also dark. That means between frame one and frame 30, don't do anything with regards to lighting. You know, just keep it dark. Then I will move one frame above. So from frame 30, I will go to frame 31. And then at frame 31, I will completely switch on my light by keeping it at zero. And then I will uh, click on I over here. Okay. So right now, the information that Blender has is that, okay, frame one is completely dark. Frame 30 is also completely dark. However, frame 30 first is, is like full brightness. So when you're playing it, as I said, uh, it's playing 24 frames a second. In one frame when the light is switched on, it will look like you know the light switched on immediately at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the 30th frame. So if I just play this, you know, see, I paused it at 7th frame, it's still dark. I paused, I paused it at the 19th frame, it's still dark. I have paused it at the 26th frame, and it's still dark, OK? Whereas in the previous uh, version, you know, as the frames were increasing, the light was gradually increasing in its uh, intensity. Okay, so I keep doing again. Twenty cell frame also still dark. Thirtieth frame still dark, and then immediately thirty fifth frame, you know, all of a sudden, you know, it's it's uh, become like all bright. If you want, you can literally see this frame by frame. So if I go to the thirty first frame, it's dark, and then if I just move one frame above. Immediately, it's like, you know, uh, I'm using a switch. So it goes from zero. So it goes from being completely dark at the 30th frame to 31st frame, suddenly it's dark. So these are the two ways of uh, using lighting that I showed. One is gradual, OK? Uh, sometimes you want to use a gradual approach. And sometimes you just want to, you know, have it uh, immediately come up. So combining all these things, the material, the the lighting, etc. You can actually have a pretty good looking, let's say, a commercial type of thing. So if I play this video, it's still, you know, the cube is still rotating. So I have shown you how to animate uh, tiny, tiny things uh, individually. So I've shown you how to animate them like individually. However, if you combine all of them, you can have a pretty good looking uh, commercial. So I mean, something like a commercial, let's say. So I'll just tell you how to render this and I'll give you an example. So, okay, I basically set this up. Now, let's assume you, you know, had your entire setup done. So right now, the setup that we have is till 30, the entire screen will be dark. And then at 31, the light will get turned on. And if you want to see how that looks like, as I said, you can go to your rendered view and you can click on play and it will show you how it will look like when the video is done. So right now we have a very simple video in which the cube is rotating. And then at the 31st frame, the light will, you know, get turned on. And then the cube will stop rotating at the 50th frame. After the 50th frame, I have nothing else to do. So I can just, you know, uh, I can make this shorter. Instead of 120 frames, let's say I can 
uh, tell the like tell Blender to stop the video at 80th frame as well. So if you want to know how many seconds that is, so uh, let's go 80 by 24. If you do, let me just open my so 80 by 24. If you do, 3.3. Uh, 3. So you get a so you get around three seconds of uh, video in which basically you have a cube rotating and the light goes from dark to being you know turned on. That's pretty much it. Once you have your entire setup ready and you have seen it in the rendered view and you know you are happy with what it looks like, etc., you click on the camera option here again and you get this entire, you know, uh, I mean, all these options over here. Now, few things to keep in mind. First, resolution. So right now it's at 50% of full HD. So you can see X and Y uh, right now it's at 1080p. So if I keep it at 100%, that means uh, it's full HD. Understand that if I'm saying full HD, that means if I'm going to render 80 frames, so it's just a three second clip, okay? Each frame of those 80 frames is going to be full HD. That means you're, you're asking the computer to render 80 full HD frames. And after you render those 80 full HD frames, when you combine them, you get a 3.3 second clip. If your computer is very fast and if it's very powerful, then you can probably do this in a short amount of time. However, standard, I mean, under standard conditions, like for example, my computer doesn't have a dedicated uh, graphics card. Let's assume that you wanted to uh, produce a 10 second video, okay? And a 10 second video would be 240 frames. Let's assume that each frame will take around three minutes to render, you know? Let's assume it's full HD or, or uh, whatever, and it takes you three minutes to render. That means effectively, for a 10 second video, you will have to render up to 12 hours, right? Each frame will take around three minutes. You have to render 240 frames. That means for a 10 second clip, you will have to keep on rendering for 12 hours. Okay. So just keep that in mind because uh, to render each frame, it might take time, etc. So what, for example, I do is I don't uh, keep the quality of each frame at full HD. I uh, take down the quality. So I keep it at, let's say, you know, 50%. So 50% of full HD, you could say something like 540p, which is slightly above 360p, you know, let's say, for example, I'm not entirely sure. So if I have it something like, you know, uh, at 50%, then my computational time for each frame decreases by quite some time. So that's helpful. Uh, that's there. So let's assume that, you know, you're happy with everything. You've set the, you know, the resolution of each frame as well. Then your frames per second, you know, I had spoken about this in the beginning, whether you want it to be 24 or 60, 24 is like the bare uh, minimum, right? Once you've done all that, then you can also choose how, uh, so here, when you click on this PNG, uh, depending on what you choose, right? So whether you choose image or movie, two things will happen. First, if you choose any image uh, format, let's assume I go ahead with JPEG, okay? What's going to happen is once I click on JPEG and then let's assume I click on animation. Okay. Let's assume I click on animation. What's going to happen is that Blender will render out 80 frames individually and it will save them to a folder. So in that folder, you will individually have 80 frames and then, you know, you can use those 80 frames and, you know, you can use a separate software to combine those 80 frames and then play the video. The advantage of this feature is that let's assume in between rendering something wrong happened uh, and let's assume before something wrong happened blender had already uh, rendered around 50 frames in that folder you will still have 50 frames you can directly you know uh, go to the 51st frame and start to continue from there that's the advantage of uh, you know like saying blender uh, sorry sorry saying blender to individually uh, render out the picture so that you have all of those frames and then you can choose to combine them that's one method. The other method is you will notice that there is an option called uh, movie. So in movie, you can choose whichever format you want. Let's assume I go with AVI JPEG. If I choose a movie format and then if I click on animation directly, I will get a saved video. I'll not get individual frames. I'll get, I'll directly get a saved video. Of course, the problem with this is that, um, uh, in between, if something wrong happens, you might have to start all the way, you know, from starting. So that's one disadvantage. And the advantage with like saving individual frames is that if you had saved like half of the frames already, then you can continue with the other half. So that's around it. 
let me give you an example of uh, so last uh, you know uh, workshop we had essentially worked around a coffee cup and i had rendered a video of that coffee cup so i can't render in front of you guys like right now because it's going to take a lot of time but i'll just quickly show you how it's going to look like so once i have this set at let's say avi jpeg i'm choosing the movie option right now the directly uh, you know so that i directly get a video uh, if i click on animation over here okay what's going to happen is that it will begin to render out frame individually in front of my screen but it won't save each of these frames it will directly uh, send me the video it will directly save the video for me so if you notice right now it's rendering the first frame and if you recall the first frame was dark in fact all the frames up until the 30th frame are dark after that we have asked the light to be switched on so if you notice uh, on the top left over here you get frame 1 written over here and you realize that it's going to end at 80th frame so once frame 80 gets rendered then whenever you had asked blender to save the file so output is over here okay you can by clicking on this folder icon you can choose whether you want to save your video in the desktop or a file etc wherever you have told uh, i mean wherever you had told blender to save your file it will basically save your video there however if i if instead of movie if you had let's say selected those images option then after rendering each frames it would have saved those frames individually so that's the main difference right i'll cancel this for the time being because obviously it's going to take a lot of time my computer is pretty slow in that regard but i will show you uh, an example of some of the videos i mean the coffee cup animation that i had done so right this is also not in full hd it's uh, it's in 540p or something of that sort So let me just show you uh, what all is happening over here. First thing you will notice if you notice the left hand side of the screen. Uh, at the beginning of the video, the light is quite dim. Towards the end of the video, it it, it uh, you know becomes bright. That means I have chosen that uh, gradual light uh, you know uh, technique. Where essentially, uh, I had told Blender that okay, at frame one the light is off, and at frame uh, whatever like the end frame the light needs to be on. so throughout the video the light will gradually increase okay so it's not like a immediate increase it's not like a switch it increases gradually like in small small steps you know something of that sort the second thing if you notice is that in this coffee cup it is rotating about the z axis okay it's rotating about the z axis so again at frame 1 it has a certain orientation and at the last frame it has a different orientation so it rotates another thing in this video it looks it looks like the coffee cup is coming towards you right it's rotating and it's coming towards you but in reality what i had done is that the coffee cup was at a single place so the position of the coffee cup was not changed it was only rotating my camera was actually moving from left to right but when playing the video obviously it won't look like your camera is moving towards left to right it will look like your coffee is moving from I and mean, your coffee cup is moving from right to left so it looks like as though the coffee cup itself is you know sliding and coming towards you but in fact in the actual production part it was just rotating and all that i had done was move the camera towards it so there are three things which are happening in this one the light goes from being very dark to slightly gradually increasing which i showed you how to do second this coffee cup which i had uh, designed it's basically rotating around the z axis that's it and third the camera is moving towards the coffee cup so in all it gives you this uh, i mean it's it's not that fancy but it gives you this nice small animation but you know you could probably use it as like a very basic uh, thing okay you could probably uh, put this video in a different uh, video editing software and you know for example add text over here uh, or something of that sort so you know that's that's there uh one second yeah so i think that sort of uh, concludes the animation workshop at this particular point is there anything else that you guys uh, have any doubts so far or anything else that you guys want to know or something like how it's done in movies etc so let me just quickly let my screen over here i'll go to my uh, the the camera view etc now i told you one way of doing i mean one one i 
okay, I, I, I spoke to you about how to move a camera in a single line, for example. So right now I have it. Okay, let me go to the first frame. Okay, uh, one second. Right, I'm in. The, I'm at my first frame, and the camera is fixed over here. I can click on I, and I can uh, lock rotation scale, whatever. And then I can go to let's say the thirtieth frame. The thirtieth frame. Okay. Once I'm once I go to my thirtieth frame, I can move my camera. Uh, Again. Yeah, I can move my camera like this, let's say towards the object, and then I click on I and I can fix the values again. So what happens over here is if I click on play, you will notice that two like so two things, I mean actually three things are happening, but it's not uh, rendered so you can't see the light effect. But just in terms of motion, one your camera is I mean your object is rotating. And second, your camera is moving towards the object. But when you render this out, it will look like uh, the object is coming towards the camera. OK, fine. Now, this is a single line of uh, motion of the camera. If you want to be, you know, for example, if you want to do complex stuff with the camera where, let's assume, you know, uh, okay. let me move this to the top view. OK. And let me hide this. So I click on that and H. Let me hide this as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have my camera here. I have my camera here. Uh, let me clear the frames. Okay. I have my camera here. Okay. I taught you how to move the camera from this point to, let's say, the, like this point. But the angle of the camera is pretty much the same, right? It's just moving here. That's one way of doing about it. Uh, so in this view, what happens is your camera is just moving in a straight line. So there's not much uh, motion. Let's assume you wanted something more complicated, like you know you want the camera to move like this and like this, or come towards the object, or etc. Whatever. There are multiple ways. So first of all, you you need to understand that when you're talking about movements, they can happen in two ways. One, you can either move the object, right? So for example, let's assume you wanted to have a animation of uh, let's assume the object going. Uh, you know, across the camp, like like the object going like this, let's say, like, you know, in a angle, something like this. There are two ways of doing that. One, you actually move the object itself from in this manner, and the camera is constant, okay? The other, the object does not move, but the camera moves like this, right? So it's very simple. Either the object is coming towards the camera or the camera is going towards the object. In either case, when you render the video out, it's going to look the same, right? Uh, basically, it's uh, relative. When you're sitting in a train, it looks like the trees and the buildings are, you know, going in the opposite direction. So it looks like the building, I mean, the building and the, and the trees are going from left to right. But uh, if you're someone who is an outsider, and if you're looking at a the train, then for you, the trees and the buildings are stationary, but the train is moving. In a similar way, when I talk about movements, whether it's rotation or whatever movement it is, I can either choose to just move the object itself around, or I can choose to move the camera around. Okay, so for example, let's say I want it to be a little bit more sophisticated. So right now at frame one, I can fix the, you know, the, the uh, properties of the camera. Then let's assume at uh, frame, uh, let's say, five, okay? At frame five, let me move it a little bit like this over here, then click on I, and I've locked it. So what's gonna happen is, I just moved a little bit over there. Then again, at, uh, let's say, frame 10, perfect, I'm at frame 10. Again, I'm going to move it a little bit like this, and a little bit like this, okay? And then I'm going to click on I again and fix the property. So now you will notice that it's beginning to have a slight pattern. So in the beginning, it was going front. Now I am individually putting points for the camera to travel at. So uh, now let me go at, let's say, 15. And let me, uh, for example, change it to something like this. Click on I, log out. So now again, if I play, right, 
notice the movement here okay I, I mean first notice the right hand side and look at the uh, movement of the camera okay so it's going like this and then like this okay that's the rotate that's the movement of the camera however look on the left hand side it looks as though the camera isn't moving at all and it's the cube in fact which is moving right it looks like the cube went somewhere there and finally it came like that over here so this is a very basic example but if you want it to and if you want to like do it in like all high end etc you have to imagine that at each uh, shot of your animation how do you want the object to move and you know which angle do you want etc and then you can break it down into different frames and then you know a lot positions and then play it so it's basically like you know for example if i want to uh, okay let me let me try to explain it to you maybe through paint or something uh taking a while to open okay I click on new. Yeah, good. Okay. So let me just quickly draw over here to explain what I mean. Okay. So look, if you choose, like, let's assume this is your, uh, you know, uh, frame one, and let's assume you chose uh, this is your 50th frame. Okay. So 50th frame is going to be what? Uh, 24 divided by 15. Uh, sorry, 54 divided by sorry 50. Sorry, 50 divided by 24 is 2.08. So roughly this is going to be two seconds. Okay. This is going to be around two seconds of a video. Now, if I have my uh, frame one position here and frame 50 position over there, whether it's the camera or the object, what's going to happen is when I click the play button, it's going to move in a straight line because I have only given two data points. Okay. So it's going to move like this. I mean, not like this, but in a straight line, right? You get the point. This is not exactly straight. However, if I want it to be all fancy, I can, you know, for example, this is my first frame. This is my 50th frame. However, if I, if I want to, for example, you know, uh, if I want to, let's say, tell the camera to move in uh, this manner, right? I want it to, let's assume I'm doing an action sequence or whatever it is. And I want the camera to, you know, move in all this weird, like weird zigzag uh, manner. One way of doing that is, once I have identified the zigzag uh, manner, I basically, instead of just giving two points, I give multiple points. So for example, so this is first frame, this is the 50th frame, right? So for example, I can give one uh, data point here, one data point here, another keyframe here. By data point, I, uh, I mean a keyframe, right? So I give multiple keyframes like this. Okay. Keep in mind that between two keyframes, it's going to move in a straight line only. Okay, so right, I give multiple uh, points like this. Let's assume so. This is pretty much straight. Then this is straight. Then this is straight. Then this is straight. Then here, 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 here. So I've given all these green points. Now what's going to happen is when Blender sees, okay, now this could be distributed, of course. So I, uh, let's assume, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So uh, this is very close, but let's assume I can distribute it, let's say, at each frame, okay? So this could be frame 1. This other green point could be, let's say, frame 2, okay? It does not matter. So frame two, frame three, frame four, or whatever it is. Now, what's going to happen is when Blender sees all of these points in animation, from first frame to this particular point, it's going to go in a straight line, then straight line, then straight line, then straight line. You know, it's going to essentially, uh, basically, go from each of these points in a straight line. So the more points you have, the more smooth it will look at the end of the day. But uh, for rough approximation case, well, it's pretty much fine, right? So you're going to have something that's going to look like this, which is more or less
close to the actual uh, path that you wanted. Uh, also, just a quick point. This is what I have understood with regards to how the, the framing, etc. works. As in, I also started to learn animation uh, a while ago. So I'm, I'm not that, I mean, I don't know uh, as much animation as uh, perhaps, uh, you know, to a higher degree. So this is my understanding of it. Maybe there's an alternative method to do it in a better way. Uh, not exactly sure of that, but yeah. Cool. Uh, if there's any more doubts or any clarifications, something that you guys want, you guys can uh, put in the chat box or like uh, unmute yourself and talk. So like I don't think there are any. So I would like to thank uh, everyone for joining in, joining us today in the animation workshop using Blender. Uh, a special thanks from uh, BMSC side to Atik Khan who has hosted uh, both the workshops on um, uh, modeling, rendering and animation together. Uh, the initial plan was only to have uh, uh, the modeling and rendering part but Atik told it's really important they learn animation too because it's one of the best features and most uh, widely used features of Blender. So seeing his enthusiasm and interest in sharing knowledge with everyone, we went ahead with the second workshop too. So I would like to thank Atik again.